Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. What was that? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel in honor of Groundhog's Day, which is today, but yesterday, to those of you watching now, um, I decided to pull some books off my shelves that I could read over and over and over and over again. Now this isn't an original idea, this is actually an article posted on BookBub's website where authors revealed the book that they could read over and over and over again in honor of Groundhog's Day, but I'm taking it upon myself to go ahead and give you my list of books that I could read over and over again. The one rule in choosing books for this video is that I have to have already reread it at least once. So. <laughs> Without any further ado, some of these won't be a shock to a lot of you, and then some of them I've never even talked about on this channel. So, this should be fun. First off, I have two books by my favorite romance author who, I don't know, I'm, I'm worried that I might be falling a little bit out of love with this author. I haven't read a new book. Like, I have at least three new books by this author that I haven't even read yet. <laughs> so I'm a little bit uh, concerned about where our relationship is going. But these first two books, I absolutely love. The author is Kristen Ashley. The first book is Motorcycle Man. This is actually the last book in her Dream Man series. It is about our hero, Tack who is the president of a motorcycle club. And Tyra is our heroine. She has just recently been hired to work for the legit side or the business side of this motorcycle club. Kristen Ashley has one thing in common throughout the majority of her books, which is alpha males. I mean, this is a very, and this series speaks to that almost more than any of her other books. I mean, these guys are some hardcore alpha males. I love the first one and this one the most, but this is just so rereadable and so enjoyable. Just a side note, this book also is the uh, introduction of the motorcycle club that's featured in, an, in a whole nother series by this author. So it's just really great. The other thing that I like about most of Kristen Ashley's novels is that they feature mature characters, people who are midlife. Um, they're in their thirties, they're in their forties. They've had, they, they have rich histories of past relationships and drama and sometimes children and, and, you know, the adults in her books are usually trying to merge to very different and full lives in order to have a successful relationship. And this one is just a little bit more unconventional than others because it is the motorcycle club angle. This wasn't the first MC romance that I read, but it is definitely the only one that has stuck and that I've that I can quickly reference when somebody asks me about an MC romance. So the second book by Kristen Ashley on this list is Sweet Dreams. I love this book so much. I actually have multiple versions of it. I have the ebook. I have the mass market paperback. I have the trade paperback. I should mention that Kristen Ashley's series are usually what I would consider standalones. Each book has its own story arc. Uh, you're not left on any cliffhangers, but the books all tie in together somehow. And Sweet Dreams is the second book of her Colorado Mountain Man series. The first is The Gamble, which is also phenomenal. But um, this is the story of Tate and Lauren, our heroine. And Lauren has been sort of a gypsy as of late her her marriage fell apart she realized that her husband was sleeping with 
another woman. She just sort of disconnected from everything. She left a lot of things behind, left her marriage, her home. She told her parents she needed to find herself and, and what she wanted out of life. And she ended up traveling to a place called Colonel, Colorado. And when she arrived in Colonel, she saw something about the town that she liked. And so she started making roots for herself there and takes a job at a bar where Tate is a part owner. And at first he doesn't like her. He has no respect for her. And he actually says some pretty cruel things about her. But then one thing after another, their lives kind of grow together. Uh, this book for me really brings home that realistic aspect of relationships where, you know, we can say things that actually hurt each other, that people in adult and functional happily ever afters can sometimes have moments of, of anger or passion where they, they can actually say things that hurt each other. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I am saying like, that is one of the things about this book that like makes it hit home. It makes, you know, it like gets you in the feels because while it's making you swoon, it's also making you hurt a little bit. And so I just, I must guess I'm a glutton for punishment, but I highly recommend the entire Colorado Mountain series, but this one, I could read this book over and over. I've probably read it three or four times already and talking about it is making me want to read it again. That's all there is to it. Now, this next one should probably come as no surprise. It is The One by John Mars. I've been singing this book's praises since 2017. I read this book as an arc. I believe, you know, it had a uh, UK release date that was much earlier than the North American release date. And so uh, that's just how it's been on my radar for so long. But this is actually quite a new book to North America and people on BookTube. I, this book is addicting. It is amazing. It's a techno thriller. And in this book, human technology has advanced to a point where we've isolated the gene that determines who our perfect mate is. And so the book centers around a dating service where you submit your DNA and within a huge database, it can pull out and present to you your perfect match. The book has five narratives. I believe it follows five different narratives of people who've participated in this, including the creator of this dating service. And it just, it's, it's great. It has, John Mars takes a concept that isn't super far-fetched. It's not difficult to believe. It's not crazy to come up with, but he, he presents it in a book where he explores five of the most intense scenarios in this situation. So we have a serial killer who ends up matched with a police officer. We have a woman who finds out her match is already dead. We have a man in a straight relationship about to be married who gets his DNA matched with someone of the same sex. And, and I mean, all of this craziness ensues, all of this drama ensues. And it's just, I love the way that he explores these five different scenarios with really extreme circumstances. Um, I will, I'll be talking more about the one here in a little bit because I've binge read a bunch of John Mars novels lately, but I just, I've, I've reread this one once. I love it. And it's so, it's just so delicious. I highly recommend Everybody who watches my channel uh, knows that I love this book, but you might be surprised to know that I would reread it over and over and over again. That's Brother by Anya Alborn. It's my favorite horror novel to date. I love this book. I love everything about this book. And while it's tough material to take, like it... <laughs> Could I read this book over and over again and not become severely depressed? I think I could. 
it is the story of Michael and his family living in rural West Virginia. And the family kidnaps and kills uh, young women. And Michael is trying to find a way out of that cycle. (laughs) He also has a very toxic relationship with his brother, Rebel. And a strange uncomfortable relationship with his sister. It's a horrifying story. It's, you can hear me talk more about Anya Alborn um, in several different places on this channel. I'll leave some videos linked below, but this is just, again, something that's addictive, something that like you can't take your eyes from, something that it's, it's hard to read. Some of this stuff is gruesome and some of this stuff is definitely content that you don't purposefully expose yourself to over and over and over again. Yet I could read this book over and over and over again. I feel like there's just more to discover in this book. This book is multi-layered. This book is so gut-wrenching and heart achy. Uh, you really feel for this character, Michael, you really, you want to pull him in and take care of him the way that he's never been cared for in his entire life. It's tragic. It's a tragic, tragic horror novel, but I'm telling you, you, or you discover things about it every time that you read it. And I can't say enough good things about this book, obviously, because all I do is say good things about this book. Uh, the next two books on this list of Groundhog Day books I could read over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, I, I, one of them I've talked about in this channel. The other one I've never uttered. I, I've never mentioned it. I'm pretty sure. Um, that book is crazy cool. This is by Tara Jansen. This is book two in a Steel Street series. Um, the series takes place out, uh, the series takes place in Denver. It's about these former car thieves slash petty criminals that are hired to work in this clandestine, like government security kind of way. It's a romantic suspense, by the way. Uh, the series is so much fun. The series is gritty. And if you like, a uh, like a fast and the furious or alpha males or bad boys that are on the side of good, then I highly recommend the series of books. This one came out in 2005 though. So it's probably going to read a little bit dated, but, um, it specifically is the story of Christian and Kat, who had a brief love affair when they were young. And Christian actually goes to jail for two years after an incident in which he saves her life. (laughs) At that point, they, you know, obviously they part ways. Uh, Then Kat finds herself in danger again. Christian rescues her and the two spark up another round (laughs) of romance. Most of this is sentiment. Like it's a romantic suspense. I read in 2005, I was 25. Um, I'm dating in 2005. I was 25. Um, I was reading a lot. I was in a place in my life that I needed to escape. Um, And I was borrowing a lot of romance novels from my mom. This happened to be one of them. And I ended up reading the whole series. The whole series is fun and suspenseful and dangerous. But, you know, the kind of danger that you're addicted to, not like the super scary kind of danger, but the kind of danger that everyone sort of wishes they maybe had a little bit of in their life because it just amps up everything, if that makes any sense. It just turns things up a notch. Um, and this definitely paved the way for my appreciation of like Kristen Ashley, uh, in the books that I mentioned before her rock chick series, the dream man series. I mean, this is the book that, that probably 
started it all. So great holding each one of these books. I, I found this hardcover at the used bookstore. Um, I was reading mass market paperbacks that I stole from my mom, borrowed, whatever. And so I don't believe that I have those anymore, but I found this and another book in the series called Crazy Wild in hardcover from the used bookstore. And I've just, I've never read this copy before, but I just have it. I just have it. And I would definitely, if somebody told me that I, I could only read one book and I had to read it over and over and over again. I mean, this would be a very, very serious contender. If you're curious, the other books in the series are uh, Crazy Sweet, Crazy Hot, Crazy Kisses, Crazy Wild, which I mentioned. So, Crazy Love. I really, really like this one a lot. I don't care for the cover much. I don't know what kind of James Bondy stuff this is, but I really like it. <laughs> I just want to read it to you. I just want to sit and read it to you. Uh, the next book is one that I've mentioned on this channel. Um, and again, oldie but goodie, it's Cry No More by Linda Howard. Um, this book is actually one year older. It actually came out in 2004. This is the story of Mila, who, while living with her husband outside of the country, um, their newborn gets abducted and vanishes and this obviously sets off a chain of events but Mila eventually becomes someone who dedicates her life to finding lost children all while still searching for clues as to what happened to her I believe he was two weeks old two weeks or two months I mean just very young infant taken from her one day she actually gets a tip that while investigating realizes it's this is legit and takes steps closer to finding her lost son and she teams up with a guy obviously she teams up with a guy named James Diaz who's quite I don't know if he's like a mercenary or like he's He's pretty hardcore. I can't remember exactly what his like role is prior to meeting Mila, like what he does, but he's, he's a pretty hardcore guy. He's the guy you want on your side when you're, you know, heading into foreign countries and rubbing people the wrong way. And, you know, they form a relationship and it's, it's strange. It's like, yes, they form a relationship. This is a romance novel. Like what happens between Mila and and James is significant, incredibly significant, but I'm not going to say it's eclipsed by the storyline of her trying to locate her child, but that's what hits home having read the book. The mother and lost child story. It's, oh, this book makes me cry. It's pretty realistic, or at least the way that I can imagine it would be to lose your child and everything that happens to her in this book, it just feels so real and so authentic. Her inability to get over the loss, what happens when she has to make some really, really tough decisions. I mean, it just all feels so authentic and you're right there with her. And first book that I ever read that brought me to that emotional brink and so good so good and I would happily reread this anytime the opportunity presented itself uh finally Ready Player One by Ernest Klein if you're unfamiliar this is the story of a future in which everybody spends time in a virtual reality and the creator of that virtual reality dies and diehard fans, you know, are racing to find this Easter egg, this, this clue, these, these clues, this key that he's hidden. <laughs> Specifically, the story is about Wade Watts and his love of the game and his love of its creator, 
uh, James Halliday. I love this book so much and it might be surprised like this is so unlike any other books that I like but I mean I love this book a lot because I love video game culture I love 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 the 80s <laughs> the 80s was my generation I love the 80s so it just it's fun like this book is the funnest that's not a word this book is the most fun thing ever it's funny it's clever. Like I think of all of the books on this list that I could read over and over again, this book would actually remind me the most of my own life. The song references, the just it would it would call to mind my own past. And because of that, I think it would be a really great book to read over and over and over again. If I could only read one book forever, this would be a great contender because this book would remind me so much of myself and my life, even though it's actually futuristic. Does that make any sense? It's kind of strange. But this book also contains a lot more than just like, it's not just a romance. It's not just a horror novel. Like there's, there's very serious conflict in here and suspense and action and a little bit of romance and um, friendship and just science fiction and discovery and mystery. And I mean, this book contains so many things that would also be a really great contender to reread over and over again, because all these different aspects, all these different themes get balled together in this one book. And I don't know how it could ever be boring. So <sighs> there you have it. Uh, that is my list of Groundhog Day books or books that I would read over and over and over again if I can only read a certain set of books. Down in the comments section below, let me know which book you would choose to read over and over and over again if you were stuck in a Groundhog Day loop. You can check out other references to these books in the links down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.